I don't think you would make a good astronaut. Me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why? Mm-hmm. Your Why? head won't fit into the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's true. Gotcha. He's He's got me there. He's got me there. Tesla is getting dialed in their 4680 production, but it isn't dialed in yet. How close are we and are we going to get there? Let's find out. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Joining me today is my good buddy Herbert from Brighter with Herbert. He's got his own YouTube channel over there. Check him out. He gets some of the best guests that uh, that I like. They're better guests, but I don't like them. <laughs> so, no. No, he gets, I mean, he interviews astronauts and CEOs. So that's yeah. insane. And you Very every cool. week. My best and guest. Me. Love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I am his best guest. I admit it. It's true. <laughs> So we saw a story this week that Tesla has hired a manufacturing expert from the world of semiconductors. Semiconductors are a very, very high precision finished product. Does this give you concern that there may be uh, problems with the 4680 line that are deeper than we may understand? I, it does not. So just because we saw another hiring of another expert why do we assume that that means that they're not, you know what I mean? That there does, it's not a fact to me that that means that there's tru- either trouble or that, uh, you know, they're, they're needing, that they're always hiring incredible people. Is this something that you think uh, it was missing that they needed now? I didn't before yesterday when I saw the headline. So what I, what I'm thinking is now we discussed this on your show earlier this week that the, line is already running pretty well mm-hmm. but that they're looking to of course they're always looking to add improvements and batteries are hard to make because a, a lousy battery is easy to make uh, you and i could make one in a, a, a home experiment using a potato okay. that's that's known technology but if you look at the teardowns that have been done by monroe and associates you'll see that the batteries they use are incredibly precise the voltage tests to, you know, I- I- extreme tolerances. In the manufacturing, they come out extremely uniform. Getting all that dialed in is difficult. And when you're talking about a uh, large filament, a sheet of, uh, of for the jelly roll, as large as what you're going to put in a 4680, the margin for error increases with area. And the surface area of those batteries on the inside, when you unroll them, is substantial. So does this tell you that, that, so you don't think that this means that there's a big problem or? No, it's the opposite, right? I think this is fantastic news. So we, let's go, let's go back and uh, review what we know. Drew Baglino in the last quarterly earnings call said that we are not battery constrained for the Cybertruck. Uh, Just this morning, Tesla announced that they are able to produce enough 4680 battery cells for 1000 Cybertrucks per week. And then uh, Jordan Gizegi kind of calculated and said that based on his estimates, you know, we're going to be able to, we've already grown, uh, what is it, uh, 20% growth in the last, Mm -hmm. 25% growth in the last five months. He thinks it's an S curve now that uh, they're going to now double the production lines from one to two. And so that must mean that they are confident that this, at least this version of the 4680 is enough to not only provide great cyber trucks because they're already releasing the cyber trucks but it's now to the point that they're going to go ahead and double and copy and duplicate the line to not just one right if they were still continue to tweak it and make it work then they're not going to double the production line yet they're going to wait until they figured it out they've figured it out to a level and so hiring this person is something for next year and two years from now and do that extra jump we know that the 4680 this year is significantly better than the previous battery technology, but it's not yet what they had promised and what they had hoped to achieve. So they still need to continue improving it. But that's what I think this is. It's not that it's going to, it means that things are bad. It just means that, in fact, they're ready for the next jump. So I had a chance to talk with Jordan Giesegi a week or two ago, and I was asking him about generational changes between the 4680. We know he had an early one he was able to get his hands on. Uh, we know he had a second generation one. And uh, there were differences in there that he was not yet ready to share. Uh, but there, 
they're better. He could share that the wall, the can is a thinner gauge metal. That's going to drop a whole lot of weight from the vehicle. And they certainly seem to be overly thick on the first generation. These are all things you can improve. And like you're saying, if this expert's field of, if, if the benefit he's going to bring is that he's going to drop, you know, a penny of material per cell and we're making tens of millions of these, it starts to add up pretty quick. Uh, so I guess that makes, it certainly makes sense that you would want to bring on someone with that high, high level of extreme precision engineering, manufacturing expertise. But I just was wondering if, if we're thinking that maybe, so you're saying, what I hear you saying, and you tell me if this is right, is that they needed to reach this level for it to work profitably in the Cybertruck and we're there. But mm. uh, experts like this can bring us to here or here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even if they don't come, we don't reach the promise of how far 4680 could actually benefit Tesla and, you know, the vehicle and all that. But today it's it's better than what it was before. And we're still going to sell Cybertrucks through the roof and it's going to be a great product. It is. So remember, we also have the manufacturing credit through the IRA for batteries. The Cybertruck has a 123 kilowatt hour pack. So that would be just at the cell level, 3,500 plus a quarter. So about $4,000 for the batteries, another $1,000 for the for assembling it into a pack that's five grand you can take off the price of the vehicle at on the on the manufacturer's side just in manufacturing credits for batteries so if they are less efficient at the at the pack level by four thousand dollars over a chinese competitor it still makes sense financially to make them even at that high price I think I'm doing the math right on that. That's oh, you did, yeah. I mean, I think you calculated correctly. It's five million dollars per week uh, <laughs> that that Tesla's getting from the IRA because of the Ford Escape batteries now, hmm. and so it it's already profitable. It's already like again, I don't know, man. I, I this is not my area of expertise. We got to ask Jordan, but to ask him this question. <laughs> we got to uh, ask Jordan. <laughs> but just basic basically it's like it's not like I don't think of it as uh Tesla's in trouble. In fact, it's the complete opposite. You heard the confidence by Drew Baglino in the last earnings call. We're not going to be battery constrained this year. Now I've seen new footage from Joe Tegmeyer who went down to Corpus Christi and took a look at how the lithium refinery is going because as the oh, years go know. by, there yeah. are stricter and stricter requirements to qualify for these credits. And at some point you're going to have to have domestic lithium and this facility is moving along. I am no longer confident it will be finished this year, uh, yeah. but also I don't think there's any urgency to get it done that quickly. And uh, and then, of course, once it's finished, you've got to turn it on and get it working, which is a whole other, whole other thing. And apparently they're doing some new things with lithium refinement uh, to hopefully those aren't too complicated, but we shall see. Um, have you had a chance to see any of the footage of it yet? Not yet. The lithium refinery and how yeah. far that's going. Yeah, not yet. You only need to spend a few minutes. Anybody watching, um, I'll throw a link in the description to Joe Tagmeyer's videos on the lithium uh, uh, refinement facility in Corpus Christi. It's a big uh, construction site with a bunch of half-finished buildings and capacity to expand it further once it's operational and uh, and validated. So that's very, very fun and exciting too. That's all just part of it. We just this is a benefit that people just don't seem to accept about Tesla is it is the most American made car. And if you look at the top five spots, I think they're all Tesla's and it, it depends on the model. You know, if you get a made in China model three or Y, it is very Chinese made beginning to end. There are very few parts that go into a Tesla when I was touring the factory, I did see boxes uh, mm -hmm. that said Model X, and then it said something in Chinese. I'm going to yeah. deduce that those parts came from China. Was and it uh, Rohan Patel, one of the executives at Tesla? He had a post on X one time, and he said that 
Tesla cars are the most U.S. made, American made cars. But then he said, it's also the most Chinese made cars. And it's also the most European made cars. Yeah. Meaning to say that when they make the cars in China, it, there's no other car manufacturer that makes the most like parts coming from China. And that's why yeah. it's the most Chinese made car. And people don't understand that that's the, how they do things is everything is localized. Everything is localized. Right. There are, there are only certain parts that it would even make sense to get from that far away. You've got the, the delay in, in time you've got the, yeah, and then the cost of shipping can negate the savings in labor and, uh, all that. Oh, you guys, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? All that good stuff. This was a short one because that's all it needed. We're not going to just blabber to fill time. <laughs> like it sounds like I'm doing right now. Head over to Brighter <laughs> if you would, if Thank you'd you. be so kind. Uh, Herbert does great work. If you're here, you probably already know that. But just in case, there's always somebody new. Uh, I do want to thank all my channel members, all my patrons, and all my ex-subscribers for their support. That is how I'm able to actually make these videos, how I'm able to actually mm -hmm. get out on the road. By the see way, these Brian, things. Yes. Before we leave, I don't think you would make a good astronaut me <laughs> why mm -hmm. your why? head won't fit into the helmet <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's true gotcha. he's he's got me there he's got me there ah uh, so uh yeah uh everybody else uh like subscribe do the usual things for those who support me financially i appreciate it it's how i get out on the road to do all these things meet all these people and see what i see to know what i know and it means the world to me i appreciate it like subscribe do the usual and stay tuned stay juicy and i cannot wait to hear from you clever robots when i'm not an astronaut <laughs>